Yeah, how do we know that ice is safe? First of all, most important to know there is no ice 100% risk free. Today I'm going to show you four different ways how to measure the thickness of the ice to be safe while enjoying our outdoor adventures. Since I'm living on my half island, I'm really surrounded by water in summer times and by ice in winter. So for training my dogs, I depend on ice, since I only have a few trails to use which do not need a start across the lake. The quality of the ice is not always the same, which is very poor this year, but let's dream first a little bit about the last year's black ice. Yep, but no longer dreaming. Now we have to go and check how it really looks like this year. Actually, luckily we had last night quite some minus degrees still. It's still now about minus 15. So in the night it was probably close to 20. Uh, which definitely helps still a bit to get some more ice, but um, it's not good. Okay, ready, packed and let's go! Alright, some words about the quality of the ice. The black ice, like we've seen it from last year, forms in cold temperatures without snow. It's transparent and often shiny and black. Could be a little bit sketchy while walking on. It grows downward and is generally the most stable type of flake ice. The next stage is the greyish solid ice. It consists of snow ice that forms when wet snow freezes on its upper surface. On top of this usually lies a more or less thick layer of snow. Then we have an ice quality called stöp is in Swedish. I unfortunately do not know the translation for it. But when snow falls and ice settles, the way of the snow pushes the ice down. Then water seeps onto the ice through small cracks and the wet snow slush that forms on the lake at zero degrees prevents further growth on the underside of the ice. Instead, the slush snow begins to freeze and grow, so there are two layers of ice with water in between. Lake ice is built up in several layers of different quality. Wind, snow, temperature changes, sun and rain have a big impact on the quality of the ice. Okay, let Let's have a look at the different options. Uh, first of all, if we really want to measure it exactly, we might choose the very traditional ice drill, which um, is used by ice fishermen to make the fishing holes. Uh, this has a pretty big diameter here on the bottom, which allows us to dip down sort of a measurement stick, which I've got with me here. Uh, sort of the fastest way and very practical way is to kind of hit or to the lake surface with this very heavy tool. It's a so-called ice stud or ice pick or however you want to call it. It's um, pretty good and I myself, I Personally, I really prefer that one. I don't really use, but it's definitely handy. It's a regular drill with battery driven. So you have 
a long drill you use for this and you can measure the eyes very well. And last but not least we've got the ice screw which is used for ice climbing normally. I really love that piece of tool because this is very light and easy and small to bring along all kind of winter adventures. So this is something which I have constantly in my dog sled or backpack or however I'm moving. The ice crew. Bring dry shoes. If you're checking the ice, um, always things can happen. Dry shoes and in the backpack I even have a little bit dry clothes. The load capacity increases with the square of the thickness. For example, if 3 cm carry 90 kilos, 4 carry 160 and 5 cm carry 250 kilos. How the weight is distributed on the eye surface as well as the speed one has play as well a role. These centimeters always refers to a solid black ice. A pedestrian or skater can move on lake ice as thin as 4 cm without breaking through the ice. However, the ice is not always smooth and has cracks, so 5 to 6 cm thickness is necessary for safety. The more people move on the lake ice at the same time, the faster load bearing capacity decreases. So if you go out with a group, it is of utmost importance to keep the distance between each other. For snowmobiles or quads, an eye thickness of at least 12 to 20 cm is appropriate, depending on the weight of the machines. For cars, at least 20 cm of ice is needed. Maybe still a few words about in case you anyhow should break through the ice and end up in the really cold water. Uh, the problem with this basically is that hypothermia is really reaching out for your body very very quick. So it really counts to be as fast as possible to get out of that hole again. Um, but how to do easiest? So always go back to the direction where you come from because there you know that the ice is maybe a bit better than ahead of you. Let's have a look. I won't go swimming. Uh, I don't do this really. I hate cold water. <laughs> Thank you.
yeah, this went actually much better than I was expecting. Um, it definitely carried me all the way as a walking person easily. Um, the weakest spots, they had about nine, 10 centimeters ice still, so pretty okay. But I know that it's not really this wished black ice, so yeah, it's, it's okay, but it's not too good. It definitely can grow more to be a really safe place. I crossed it by snow machine now several times. I wanted the overflow water to get up. I kind of build more ice quicker as well as the track will get dry when I kind of use it all the time like this. But, but, um, let's see what my lead dog Ori is saying to this whole project. Um, let's go and ask him if he will join me. Let's see. Har du sett vad jag har gjort? Jag har korsat isen. Vad säger du om det? Ska du följa mig dit bort? <laughs> yeah, I like you could hear maybe. Um, he really did doesn't want to cross it yet. He had once or twice a bad experience on the lakes and the ice was cracking, so he's very scared. But um, yeah, he's right this time, definitely. It's too early to cross for me with the dog team. Since uh, it's not a machine, I can't speed up. I still have to wait a while. But this um, snowmobile driving I made, to largen the track, get the water, the overflow water to freeze will help a lot that we can probably go pretty soon. Uh, yeah, if you like this video and you would like to see more of them, please like and subscribe and stay tuned. And don't forget, ice is never 100% safe. Be careful what you are doing out there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.